developer advocate with JFrog. I'm here in the JFrog booth at KubeCon EU in Valencia, Spain. And today I have with me Dennis. Dennis, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Rosa, and I work as a developer advocate manager at Couchbase. Awesome. So Dennis has some amazing topics to talk to us about. Uh, we were chatting earlier. You work with Couchbase. Exactly. Yeah. So I would say that. Uh, Continuous integration and continuous delivery is a big part. Uh, a database is a big part of that, right? And when we talk about continuous integration and delivery, I would say one of the challenges that most people have is when it comes to external dependencies, right? Yes. Uh, so, for instance, uh, external dependence could be a database, which is a kind of couch base, or it could be uh, an external service, or it could be a Kafka topic, and so on, right? And one of the popular frameworks that I haven't seen people using lately is something called test containers, right? Yes. Which is something really good. It, it, it's something super simple in general. Uh, it's just a facade in, uh, on top of Docker, right? So, and it allows you to programmatically uh, request containers. And essentially, it allows you to, in your test, you can request uh, whatever you need, right? if it is a database, if it is uh, an external service, and so on. And this, although simple, is really powerful because when we talk about microservices in general, right? right a micro uh, the problem with microservices, they are awesome, of course, but in theory, micro a microservice is simple. Yes. So you don't have a lot of uh, uh, logic in a microservice. So unit tests are usually uh, very few unit tests are enough to test the logic of microservice. Integration tests, however, are potentially the core of a microservice because it is supposed to have a lot of external dependencies. <laughs> and that's exactly where test containers and, and microservices um, can fit really well together. Yeah. And, but of course, at some point, you need to provision a database, uh, or let's say you need to run um, some user acceptance tests and, and, uh, and or you need to do some manual testing yourself yeah. just to double check that everything is still fine before you publish your production. And since we are, as we are at KubeCon, I would say Kubernetes is definitely something that helps you a lot with that, right? Um, lately, you can provision a databases, for instance, uh, with Kubernetes. Okay. It has to be, in a, it became a trend in the, la in the last two, three years, I would say. Uh, since Kubernetes launched uh, the operator uh, framework and, and support, and also um, uh, local persistent storage, because w with remote persistent storage and databases, they don't fit that well, and stateful sets, of course. And essentially, with the operators and Kubernetes, you can automatically provision, let's say, a database uh, inside Kubernetes, right? And this nice. is for me is one of the features in computer science because yeah. we always expect the databases in general to uh, work out of the box, right? Uh, but <laughs> historically, it's exactly opposite, right? We even right. Uh, have like a one person called the DBA, which yeah. is solely focused on uh, maintaining and um, improving the database. Yeah. So, and when you combine like CI/CD with Kubernetes uh, and operators, you can automatically provision uh, the database for you, and then you can reproduce the, whatever uh, environment you have in production. And when the time is right, you can also uh, hibernate your cluster to release the resources so you're saving on cost as well. And this is for me, is pretty exciting because it, it's again, for me, is the future. I'd, I'd say we have, in, in probably in the next two years, we'll probably be, have a choice of or running, hiring a database as a service offer, or running everything yourself on Kubernetes. Right. And yeah, I mean, I, I think um, DevOps guys and site reliability engineers will love this, yes. this, this to become a trend, because yes, it absolutely. will um, uh, remove a lot of pressure from, yeah. uh, from then, and they can definitely be much more productive with that. This is awesome, and, and this is pretty powerful, the things that have happened over the last few years, and I'm hibernating a database in um, like a Kubernetes cluster. I never even thought about doing that. That is something that um, probably has been far from my mind just because I'm on, more on the developer side of things, but mm -hmm. once you get to the other end and once you actually have to realize those costs, that makes a lot of sense to be able to do that. 
Uh, you mentioned a couple of other things too, um, testing. I remember uh, being on teams where um, you know, we had like an in-memory database or something where we would run our unit tests against. That's all fine and good. It, it, it is fast and convenient. But when it comes to actually integrating with the real database, uh, we did run into problems where maybe a, a column was a different, a little bit of a different type, and we had some yeah. incompatibilities, right? So uh, what you brought up, test containers, that's awesome. Um, these are Indeed. things, yeah. And, and one of the cool things is, it also, I mean, um, it also allows you to par parallelize your integration tests, right? Because when you, uh, of course, you, you, you still have need to test with the, against a real database, uh -huh. but when you have, like, you bring a Docker image, you can parallelize your integration tests, which are usually the, the kind of tests that take the longest, right? right? I've been working on a company that, okay, yeah, to run all integration tests, it will take, like, three hours, and after three hours, you realize, oh, there is this test broken here, and then you need to update everything, like, update the test, and then submit the PR again, and then wait for another three hours yeah. just to see if the test passed. And with this kind of thing, as long as you have enough memory, you can paralyze your tests and have them like uh, ready just potentially uh, half of the time. At least. Yeah, this is great. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, I've seen in the past where um, someone might put together a huge database to, you know, try to be representative of a production mm -hmm. database, right? I know we try to get as close as possible. It's not always possible. Some people work with a ton of data and, it, you know, it's just really hard to reproduce all of that. But what I'm imagining in this scenario is being able to spin up images that are a, a database that is actually what you're using in production, mm -hmm. but you only load the data you need for the test, and then you can get rid of it and exactly. move on to your next test. Exactly, yeah. That sounds a lot more reasonable and a lot more maintainable than the way that I've seen it done in the past where we maintain and update a test database in production, which is can be a lot more difficult. Yeah, I mean, the challenge has always been, like, when you have one single database, you need to have this huge data set right. where you insert, uh, like, you have this data set of everything, like, the standard data set, and then you need to make sure that whatever tests you run, uh, you need to leave the database with the same state that you had before. Otherwise, like, it might affect the performance of other tests, right? Right. Uh, so this is one of the things that uh, this kind of approach allows you to do. Of course, uh, I would still recommend, I would not recommend you to drop, uh, to start a new database in every single test. I would okay. say at least in each class, you should share the same database. That Otherwise, yeah, it that will just sense. take a lot of resource. But, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the right answer is a combination of these two approaches. One is testing against a real da database when you are testing something big or when you need to do some um, uh, user acceptance test. But for in small integration tests, like test containers and all those other technologies, there are more than enough to, yeah, I mean, to have those, um, to test the basics and yeah. then uh, the, the more core tests you test against a real database. Okay, that makes sense. I think that's good advice. I'll, I'll have to think about that next time <laughs> I'm designing these systems. Cool. Um, so uh, I'm glad to be able to talk to you, especially about databases. I feel like databases sometimes are uh, thought about too late, and in the especially in testing and stuff. Um, I'm going to let you plug Couchbase a little bit for anyone in our audience who isn't familiar with Couchbase. Where can they go to find out more about it? And Tell us a yeah, so if you're a developer, I recommend you to go to developer.couchbase.com. Um, I would say Couchbase is one of the popular NoSQL databases out there, but yeah. I would, the focus of Couchbase is more mission critical scenarios, right? So when you need to combine uh, high scalability and performance at the same time. So uh, I would say, like, the other, uh, most, da most databases, they will scale like distributed databases most of them will the sweet spot for them is like three four five and couch base you can scale to potentially hundreds of nodes uh, while still being um, strong consistent and we still support transactions right so it is uh, designed to be your main database uh, but of course like it's not for every single scenario like it, right. it's more like for critical scenarios i would say again uh, uh i don't think that NoSQL is going to replace relation or anything. It's more like a combination. Like in some microservices, for instance, you use uh, relational. In some microservices, you would use a NoSQL. And of course, um, I think one 
one last thing before we go is one interesting thing about databases for me personally is that I think developers have been started to solve things on the application side that could be easily solved on the database side, right? right. So for instance, let's say uh, sometimes we break the application in multiple, uh, in too many microservices when because we need to um, improve the performance of the application or be able to scale. And of course this adds a lot of complexity to your architecture. And I guess we are living in a world where we have too much, too, uh, much complexity in, in, in our architecture. And sometimes you can just simplify stuff when you use, let's say, a database that can scale with your application. Got it. And that instead makes of, sense. let's say, uh, let's say you have like one application in China, one is deployment in US, one for Europe, why you can just have one with the same database? And that's one of the things that, uh, like, picking the right database can help you with, right? Because I guess we got used to solve a lot of the stuff on the application side because we got used to some limitations in relational. Yes. And a lot of the things that I try to do when I talk about NoSQL is not, not, is not promoting Couchbase itself. It's just saying, hey, here is thing a thing that you should consider, right? The same way we don't use uh, C language for everything, the same way we don't use Java for everything. Yes. I think we also need to uh, use uh, databases for, specific, for the scenarios that they are designed. That makes a lot of sense. And um, I, I like what you said about, you know, everything has its pros and cons, so you just need to make sure to evaluate things depending on your scenarios and your, uh, where you are at in your project. Awesome. Okay, well, let's uh, summarize here. So consider using test containers. Absolutely. Consider using Couchbase. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> yes, also. Possibly deploy your databases in Kubernetes clusters for testing. Yeah, I, I would say... Uh, test operators uh, okay. in Kubernetes uh, with databases. So I, 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 for at this point, pretty much all um, vendors, they do have their own operators. So I definitely recommend you testing that. And there are so also some other community operators as well. So you don't even need to pay anything. You just okay. check. Uh, there is uh, some great companies supporting some uh, operators for databases in Kubernetes. So definitely something that uh, I recommend you guys checking out. Check out operators. And then lastly, consider hibernating your databases when you're not using them. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. Save some money. All right. Well, thank, thank you thank very you. much for your time, Dennis. It was awesome to meet you. Same. Um, happy to, I hope to run into you again out here on the floor and um, or maybe at another conference in the future. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.